Have you ever had to go away, whether it be from your job, your business, or even school for a certain period of time for vacation or just a leave of absence or whatever? It seems like you spend X number of days, sometimes up into a week, preparing for that time away, and then you're away, and then you come back, and then it seems like you're spending a week or so catching up from all the work that you got behind on. Yes, it's good to get away, but man, coming back and transitioning back can be quite interesting as well. And just last week, we were at the Homesteading Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri, and this week we've just really been trying to get back in the groove and swing of things. Overall, I feel like we're right there right now. I feel like we're back in that groove, but it, it is an adjustment each time we have to leave the homestead. And this week we're harvesting again. The kids were harvesting some cherry tomatoes. Josiah and Sailor have been doing a really, really good job on harvesting and, and taking care of certain areas around the farm. It's alleviating me from, from having to do everything. When you feel like you can just trust and pass on certain things to people, it really helps the homestead just flourish overall when you each can have areas that you're responsible for and not one person is responsible for it. And as they were doing that, I was working harvesting arugula. We've just really been going to town with harvesting arugula here lately. It is really doing well. And as I was harvesting this arugula, I was trying to get some side lunges in and some squats in as I was straddling this bed harvesting this arugula. So that way I was getting some resistance training in as well as increasing and working on flexibility at the same time. And these are, there are three major components to having a complete physical activity fitness routine and that is making sure you get the right amount of aerobic activity. I wasn't getting any aerobic activity in doing that, no, no cardio was involved there. But I was getting some flexibility, working on flexibility, as well as getting some resistance training with doing those side lunges as I was harvesting the arugula. So it's great to be able to harvest something and get some exercise in at the same time. And in the Do It Yourself Abundance membership area, which I'll be including in the show notes below, I really go into detail on how you can develop a fitness routine, exercise routine within the things that you do on your homestead, as well as I'm going to be sharing with things that you can do inside your home. So if you're looking to get in better shape, you may want to consider that. Like I said, the information is in the show notes below. So after I did that and the kids harvested the tomatoes, we came back together to harvest some radishes. Pretty nice one there. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and these weren't the best radishes yeah. that we have ever grown. Actually, these were new beds that still we need to work on increasing the fertility in. So there was a number of rejects that were in these beds that we were harvesting from. We were able to still get a nice harvest, but not as good as we normally do. But the rejects we gave to the chickens. And we really just enjoy sharing with our chickens and our ducks. <laughs> and speaking of the chickens, they recently got a new home. And one of our viewers has a business where he makes custom chicken coops, chicken tractors, chick saws, and things like that. I have learned during my time here on the homestead. There's certain things that I like to do, there's certain things that I really don't like to do, and there's some things that are kind of in the middle of the two. And for me, I've kind of found that most of the time, building things is not really something that I enjoy doing. So I have learned that I really need to delegate certain things, hire out certain things, if I really don't like to do them, or I feel like it's really sucking energy and the flow out of me. So this was one of those tasks and I was really, really thankful for Brent making us this new chickshaw. Once Brent arrived, I was amazed that he was able to get the chickshaw in the back of his truck. And come to find out, he loaded it in the back of his truck all by himself. But I wasn't going to let him unload it all by himself. I gave him a hand in unloading it. 
And upon looking at this chick y'all, I fell in love with it. I, I really like it. It was made with really good quality. And made with a good heart. And besides, the kids, they loved it too. So much so, they just wanted to play inside of it. <laughs> so Brent, you said that a coop like this, chicken tractor like this, would cost what? Normally about five to eight hundred dollars. Five to eight hundred dollars. I'm selling them for five ninety nine. That is pretty yeah. pretty neat. This is an excellent looking tractor here. What do you would you call this more of like a chicken tractor or more like a chick shawl or I would a combination? Say it's a hybrid chick shawl <laughs> slash chicken tractor. <laughs> Flash, apparently right now a kid's playpen. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks super neat and we're super excited and look forward to using it. We really, really appreciate hey, it. I, it's great, man. I'm glad to be a part of this and help you guys out. And, and uh, I, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's just something that I saw it in my head and made it happen. So, I love it. So the tractors you make, they're not like the normal chicken tractors and coops that you're going to see at your local hardware store or the you know, local feed store down the road. These are made with real quality materials and and really practical. Some of those are made to look just kind of like more for aesthetics than actual use. Exactly. Like when you get the chicken coops at like your big box stores, not naming any names, <laughs> um, you're going to get something that's put together in a warehouse where they're just throwing them together as fast as they possibly can. Um, their name of the game for them is, is the cheaper they can get their materials, the more they can make off of stuff. So that's why you can get a pretty good sized coop for 300 bucks, but it's going to fall apart in two or three years. But whenever you get custom made stuff, it's good quality hardware. You got time and effort put into it, thought put into it. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's not something that you're going to find at a big box store. Um, quality wise, price wise is always going to be more expensive just because of the materials and the quality and the time that people put into these types of things. And there's, there's several of us out here that make those custom coops, but and all of us have our own little quirks about doing them. But they're gonna last you a lot longer. You're gonna pay maybe just a little bit more up front, but they're gonna definitely right. last you a lot longer. Oh yeah, I, the one I've got that I, when I first started, I've created a monster with this whole building coops thing. But um, the one that I got at my house is five and a half years old and it's, five, it's just as sturdy as it was the day I built it. And for any of you watching, if anyone would like to go ahead and purchase a custom coop from you, where can they go to find that out? I'm on Facebook at Fort Powell Coops and Rabbit Hutches. I've built a lot of rabbit uh, supplies. I've built goat milking stands, uh, chicken feeders, no waste chicken feeders. Um, I'm on Instagram at Fort Powell Homestead. Uh, we have um, several, we have a website, fortpowellhomestead.com. Those are kind of the main ways of getting a hold of us. And I will include that information in the show notes below. Brant, switch hands on you. <laughs> really appreciate you hey, no problem. bringing this Thank chicken this tractor awesome. out here for us. Yeah. It's definitely a blessing, and we look forward to using it with our chickens. So. And your, your kids. You have to run your kids out <laughs> yeah. of it first. And today, we're going to introduce our chickens to their new home. Hey, Sayla. You ready to help me move this chick saw? Yep. Ready to give the chickens a new home? Mm -hmm. You sure about that? I don't know. You guys are really having a good time playing in it yourself. When Brent brought this chick, y'all, you guys wanted to live inside here. I should have let you stay in overnight. <laughs> <laughs> so this is super easy to move. I can pretty much move it with one hand. A little bit harder for Sailor to move it, but it's not that hard at all. So as I was pulling in the new chick shawl, Sailor was over there giving him, giving him some treats, distract him and get him away from coming out where I was coming in. So that was a really big hill. Thank you, Sailor. You're welcome. Okay, so when we introduce chickens to a new coop, what I like to do is leave the old one in for a little bit, but then have, as the new one is here, Open it up, let them explore it, let them kind of get feel for it and say, hey, maybe I want to live here, I'm not sure. But you'll still notice, with the rooster crow, you'll still notice 
that they'll still like to go to their old one. Uh, but over time, they will gradually get into this one more. And one of the things that I like to do to speed that up is at night, I'll take them out of their old one, put them all in the new one, and then take the old one away. So that way they're like, hey, this, what's going on here? And they'll wake up into their new home and just like, well, I don't know what happened to the old one. This is our new home now. So uh, that's one of the things that I like to do. So right now we're going to go ahead and open it up and let them explore and start getting a feel for the thing. Hey, Sailor, would you do the honors of opening up the new chick shop? Yep. Drum roll. There we go. Okay, so we're going to just leave them alone and let them explore the rest of the day on their own. I do want to mention that if you're getting brand new chickens and you're bringing them into a whole new area and into a whole new coop and you're going to let them free range, I definitely recommend keeping them contained for about two to three weeks. Because if you don't, you just bring them into a new area and then you just let them free range. They really don't have a place that they know is home, so they'll just kind of go everywhere, going up in trees and, and, and areas that they won't really be protected in. So that's something to keep in mind for those of you who free range. If you're putting them in electric fencing, you don't have to quite worry quite as much about that, but uh, it's something to keep in mind. Oh, and the reason why they need a new coop is their old chick shawl here just really needs some work done to it. It really needs some just renovating, and it has been through a lot. This was the first chick shawl that I built here on the farm, and uh, the wheels need some work done to them, as you can see there. One of the legs fell off. So, even though I don't like woodworking, I'm going to go ahead and fix it up myself. So that way we have two chick shawls. Alrighty, so after about a week or two in this area and getting used to the new home, we're going to bring them out into a new area where I want them to work on getting some brush down for us. And then at that time, we're going to really start working on getting rid of some of these trees in this area here because next year we want to expand the garden and also have sections where the chickens we can rotate them and really get a composting system going with the chickens and the ducks uh, but today uh, Lacey's going to be gearing up that chainsaw for us to get us ready for it when that time comes but the kids and I are going to be doing some yard work and we'll be bringing some fresh grass to the chickens and ducks here because uh, they mostly got it eaten out and mostly, mostly mulching there now so we got our work cut out for us Alrighty, so you're getting the chainsaw all registered and everything? I'm working on it. And here recently, making sure that we get everything registered and warranties under control and taken care of, it's been on our mind for a big reason. What do we have to deal with here recently? <laughs> well, the dishwasher stopped washing, so uh, we had to see about the warranty on that. And we just bought the dishwasher this year and come to find out the motor on it went bad. So I definitely recommend when you buy a new appliance, tool, or whatever, make sure you register it so you get the full warranty that they provide because you never know when something's going to happen. And who would have thought that in the first year of having a dishwasher that the motor would go out? It's crazy. So definitely want to make sure we don't have any problems with our other tools that we bought this year, right? That's right. Yeah, and just to make sure that we don't have any problems with other tools that we bought this year, we're going to go ahead and get those registered and make sure we have those warranties available to us. So as Lacey's doing that, we're going to go outside and we're actually behind on doing some lawn care around the property. So we're going to do that. We're actually going to harvest some grass for the chickens. So let's get started. All right, for starters, we're going to start right here in this bed. This was an area that I had intended to make a raised bed with block here. You can see the blocker there, but I didn't get to it in time, so the grass, unwanted plants, and everything has just grown up all around it. So this will be a project that I come back to uh, sometime in the fall and actually get it done ready for next season. So I didn't get it ready for this season, but it is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and 
I'm gonna weed eat this down, then let the kids come through, rake it out, put it in our new gorilla cart, and take it up to the chickens. <laughs> Recently we've gotten a lot of rain and as a result of that things have just been growing like crazy. Mainly the weeds. So I had a lot of weed eating to do today. Just try to catch things up. I weed eated around the house. Around our pump house where Will is. In the garden. around the garden oh man sometimes you don't realize how tall the grass is until you start getting in there and cutting it up so uh have this area done now so let's get the kids to come over here and uh give us a hand with raking this up and taking it to the chicken all right you guys ready to work yes you ready micah got your arm a little over the top but i think you're ready The kids would rake up the grass and put it inside the gorilla cart, which has been a huge blessing. We really like having the gorilla cart. And then they would cart it all the way over to the chickens and ducks. And the chickens and ducks really got a lot of nice vegetation today. They're ready for it. Make a couple different piles. Sorry. And then evening came. And let me tell you, it was a beautiful sky that night. And we don't routinely put up our chickens at night just because we haven't had any problems in quite some time. Because of the dogs keeping them protected, the electrified fencing, and our chickens are mostly raised in wooded areas so there's not really a threat, huge threat, for area predators. But tonight, since we had this new chick shawl, Sayla and I started putting in the chickens into their new chick shawl, their new home. And then after Sayla and I tucked the chickens in to their bed for the evening, we call it a day. Long day, but it was a day. Well, stay tuned to see how the chickens adjust to their new home. Also, check out the show notes below, and we'll see you next time. Stay strong and grow on.